the late 18th century. Interesting time in our history as a species. It's often called the Age of Revolution. Two earth-shattering revolutions. And if you ask me, the jury is still out as to which one actually ends up being the more significant in terms of world history in the long term. The French and the American revolutions. The American one says, um, given that we now live in this new land that is relatively secure, we now have an opportunity to develop a society that is closer to the ideal. We have unique advantages. In other words, we, uh, ha we're pretty much immune from invasion. Um, we, uh, we have enormous advantages in terms of social cohesion. Um, we have the opportunity, basically, to create something akin to a human utopia. We have the ability to, um, to create, as it came to be called, or referred to, I suppose, as a more perfect union. <clears throat> it was enormous idealism that sort of said, we are moving towards perfection, even if just slightly. Across the Atlantic in France, they have their own revolution, which takes a completely different turn. A lot of people say that the turn is essentially the guillotines and the reign of terror and uh, the dictatorship or quasi-dictatorship of Napoleon Bonaparte that resulted, but I don't see it that way at all. I see it as <clears throat> an essentially similar attempt to create a more perfect union, but in a radically different set of circumstances and a radically different set of preconceptions about the nature of reality in human beings. The French seemed to say, given that society is essentially a bunch of competing interests, given that uh, people can act in a corrupt and self-centered way, and given uh, that uh, there will always be some sort of internal or external crisis to be dealt with, uh, at the time of the French Revolution, it's uh, given the fact that there's four million heavily armed uh, Austrians, Prussians, uh, Russians at the border ready to pounce upon us all and we have to defend ourselves against this and our revolution. Given all of this, let's create something that is the closest that we can get to perfection in the real world. Now, you would think that the two mindsets are similar, and I would say in a certain way they are, but in a certain other way they are not. The constant theme running through American political history is a sense of idealism and a sense of frustrated idealism. Um, and constantly running through French history, if you ask me, is a sense of idealism tempered by running head-on with actual reality. French democracy having to deal with things like um, foreign invasions, occupation, um, Nazi Germany, that sort of thing. External, internal threats, all that sort of thing that the United States never really had to deal with. Um, and it's essentially uh, the emphasis is all that really divides the two. The emphasis is, the American says, we can move towards something where uh, life is better. Life is better in an absolute sort of sense. And that anything in the way of this is frustrating and annoying and is going to make us angry. The French system is, or the French mindset is, given the imperfections of the world that we live in, this is the best that we can do. Now, this goes to the very heart of my view of what the law is supposed to do. It came up in the previous series that I did, Vegetarianism and Ethics. Um, the American system, or at least the American or Anglo-Saxon or whatever you want to call it, mindset says there's right and there's wrong, and we, we have to have zero tolerance for wrong. The French mindset, or one would almost call it more the continental European mindset, um, says that there's always going to be wrong. Now what? 
how do we manage that fact? It's essentially uh, back to our old friend, positive versus negative utilitarianism. Um, neither one, neither the United States nor France uh, errs absolutely on the side of one or the other. But I would say as a general gist, the American system, or the Anglo-Saxon system, as the French like to somewhat disparagingly say, tends to be on the side of uh, positive utilitarianism. In other words, create the good, promote goodness in this world. Whereas the French system says, limit the amount of harm, limit the amount of disruption in our society, limit the amount of disruption in this world. Because the uh, French, because of their history, understand that harm and disruption and war and political upheaval are inevitable in any society. And because of not just French history, but because European history in general. Uh, America and Great Britain, to a certain extent, being cushioned, as it were, from reality, I guess, uh, by A, the English Channel, or B, the North Atlantic, um, C, promotion of the good being the way to go. I tend to err on the side of the French way of thinking, negative utilitarianism as a political starting point. Now you'd think that you're taking the idealism out of politics by doing that, but you're not. You are actually, if anything, you're injecting more idealism into politics that way than if you try to promote the good, because what you're essentially doing is you're saying, no matter, like, let's, let's just say that the world is a dreadful place full of selfish, uh, belligerent, mutually hostile people who simply will never get along. Let's just assume that. Look what we've created here. We've created the, fi the Fifth French Republic, which has democracy, human rights, all this kind of thing, in spite of all of this, in spite of the fact that we have to defend ourselves from uh, terrorism, uh, from all kinds of things, from near civil war, from uh, all kinds of dreadful things that, that, that take place, massive political scandals, corruption, this sort of thing, we still manage to do this in spite of everything. Um, I think that that, if anything, is slightly more idealistic than the American slash Anglo-Saxon view of things. Given that the world is, or can be, a pretty lousy place, I would say that any society that's developed um, a culture of human rights, democracy, respect for the rule of law, um, more or less blind justice, social democracy, etc., is pretty darned laudable. It's something that really one ought to be sort of proud of, I suppose, or one should get a sense of satisfaction at having it achieved. Um, whereas the English tend to think, and in this I include myself, um, look at how the world should be, and look at how it actually is. It, doesn't it make you mad? <laughs> it's... Uh, people are probably tired of me comparing the French and the English mindset in, in terms of uh, uh, the way that they approach just about everything. But I think that the French way of looking at things merits a second, sh a second look on, uh, on the part of all us frustrated idealists in, uh, in the Anglosphere. Um, look at what we actually have accomplished in spite of everything. That goes to the heart of what I believe politics should actually be. It's not to make us more moral or even less immoral. It's to limit the damage done by the realities that underpin our existence here in phenomenal reality. And that's what I believe is French or continental European idealism. Yes, we know that people are corrupt, we know that people are stupid, we know that people always act in their own worst interests, we know that there will be 9-11s, that there will be 4 million heavily armed Germans at our border, we know that all these things will always be there, that's just life. But given all of these, we can still accomplish an enormous amount. Um, in a way, that's an alien way of thinking in the uh, Anglosphere, but I think that it's a way that can kind of get us out of the 
constantly recurring frustrated idealism that just never seems to to cease to rear its head. Things like Vietnam, the gun debate, um, everything. Uh, it's uh, it's it just doesn't seem this one issue doesn't seem to go away. The fact that we can't seem to accept the fact that our high ideals are constantly frustrated by the world around us. Um, negative utilitarianism has some pretty good practical applications. Even if I'm sort of very sanguine about um, moral implications. Thank you.